Hello, everybody, carers, families, agers, drivers, seniors. Dr. Lana here. Welcome back to Care and Thrive for Family Legacy, you know, generational caring. I am always excited to be here meeting, meeting you. So remember, this is a live discussion, and feel free to leave in the chat your experience in caregiving. So if you haven't met before, which is unlikely, because I'm sure we've all met before. I am Dr. Lana, specialist gerontologist, passionate about intergenerational connections, family caregivers, putting on your oxygen mask first to take care of you first, but also to, you know, meld the generations and really make it work for the whole family. Make caregiving, which can be an extremely stressful time, work for you. So what is what are we going to talk about today? Oh, yeah, I am in the Caribbean and it's night for me, but it's morning someplace else. So good morning, good evening, good night to wherever you be. Welcome back. We're talking about gratitude. I know, right? Like if you hear a thousand times about gratitude, you hear a lot. I understand. And gratitude seems to be one of the big talking points now because everybody's like, you need to be grateful. We need to be grateful. Do you really know what gratitude is all about, though? So I thought, well, maybe you just talk about gratitude, but with a twist. Because, you know, this is the, this, we're not talking no whole set of big technical terms. You just want to get it real, bring it, as a friend of mine says, down to grassroots level, and let's just chat really and truly just just chat and let us know how you feel hope you bring in a friend i hope you bring the whole family to watch because we're gonna by the end of this session we're gonna be all a little more grateful i know i will be so what is gratitude first of all well and and it's good to have a definition because you know when you have all these little words and everybody says the same thing and, and someone stops and says, well, really, what is gratitude? Or a child asks you, what is gratitude? And you're like, uh, something to do with thanks. It's a little more than that, right? Okay. So for one definition, this is a Cambridge Dictionary. I'll leave all the, all the notes for you in below. It's a strong feeling of appreciation to someone or something. Okay. That's still... Didn't cut it for me. And I looked at others and they were like, well, they being thankful and so on. And it does encompass being thankful. It's true. Let's go a little bit further than that. <clears throat> so gratitude is where, yes, you have a strong feeling of appreciation. And appreciation means you hold this person or something that has happened to you or made you better or made you more um about a person or taught you a lesson and you are so thankful for it. You hold it in high value. Something that gave you someone who taught you and gave you hope or gave you another um, way of thinking that changed your life forever. You know, special teachers, mentors, grandparents that ta taught you and now they're older and maybe you're the ones taking care of them. Those sorts of lessons that you cannot there ain't no Google, there ain't no technology can do that. It's just the wisdom of that was imparted to you and made you, um, you know, made you stronger through a tough time in life. So you really value it. You hold it in high esteem. And a third one was in terms of defining gratitude. So holding it in high esteem and also a sense of, indebtedness, a sense that I owe it. Not because, oh, well, you did this to me, I'm giving this back to you. No, but the sense inside of you that this is something so important, I really feel like I'm giving it back. So how does that gratitude help in families who have a lot of caregiving stress? Because caregiving is doctor visits. It's, it is a stress. It is emotional. It's an emotional toll. It is an emotional toll. And I can tell you from my personal experience with my grand, it's like you just see this person you knew who just was so strong and now they're not as strong. 
maybe not remembering if the person you're taking care of is a spouse and you have plans, you know, and those plans are just now like gone. You're wondering what happened to all the plans we had. It's an emotional toll. You 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 you're caught you're caught between what do I do tomorrow? What lost dreams did we have? Does it even make sense making any plans at all? How can I be grateful in this journey? How can I be grateful in this journey? Okay, so let's grab your cuppa and let's talk three ways, three maybe four ways how we can be grateful. And this is a cute little mug. Congrats, congrats grad. My cousin gave me a cute for for my for gerontology. I love it. I just thought I'd do it today because I'm so grateful for it. I'm grateful for the mug. I love mugs. This is tea. Trust me. This is tea. Okay. So with all the doctor's visits and the stress and the emotional toll and the, the sleepless nights and the underlying unease in your body that says anything can happen at any time. You know that feeling? Mm -hmm. How do we increase in value? How do we improve the relationship? How does it help us to show, to be grateful, to hold in high esteem, to keep a positive view or outlook despite the situation or during, through, through the situation? We can't escape it. Can't change it, can't cure it. We can endure it. We can endure and sigh, or we can endure and smile. I rather the smile. So, so three, and so this is a twist though. This is gratitude for not only the I'm gonna put like two in gratitude, yes, for what you can do for yourself and how it improves what what it can do for you, how you can be grateful, what you can do to improve your gratitude, value, and also what you're grateful for, for the person you're taking care of. So this is a double one. I thought it was like, this is going to be cute. I'm going to be interested to see how this comes out. So watch with me. So one site had said, obviously studies show do show that practicing, and it has to be a habit. Uh, so some of you do every single day. 10 minutes in the morning, five minutes in the morning, two minutes in the evening before you go to bed. Thank you. However you say your thank yous, your prayers. Thank you for the lessons I learned today. Thank you for the time we spent today. Thank you for the fact that I have good health. Or even if, you, if your health is stressed as a caregiver, and you got all your parts, thank you from, from your toenails down as right up to your eyelash. These are eyebrows, right? To your eyelashes and the eyebrows and hair. Just little things. Thankful for my fingers. I'm thankful for my sight. I am thankful for my sight. This is my hope pin for a time in my life when I wasn't when I was so uncertain. I'm gonna talk more about this hope pin, but I thought I'd introduce it because you might be wondering why you should keep wearing this pin. So hope. And gratitude for the hope that, that this represents. Maybe there's something in your life that brought you hope. Remember that. But not only remember it. Are you you're grateful for it? It made you better? Write it down. And you know what? When you write it down daily, write down at least three things that you're grateful for, from your physical to to your to environmental to um, just the people you're around. That actually writing it down, it kind of like, as I always say, it kind of it writes it in your brain. So you're taking it from the pen, you're writing it, your eyes see it, your heart feels it. And you can go back to it on the days that aren't so good and see, you know what, I am thankful. This did improve my, my mood. It improves your immune system. So you are healthier when you're grateful. Imagine that. Don't have to take any pills or gratitude. Yeah, you should take a little vitamin C for sure, but apart from that, gratitude is a great vitamin. I like that. Gratitude is a vitamin. So let's use gratitude as our vitamin. It also improves the relationship you have with the person you're taking care of. Because when you look at, for example, when I look at my gram, and I, I could just tear up, I just tear up. <clears throat> 
Because when I think of the sacrifice that she made, the, the strength that she had, the wisdom and the little words, as she would say, you know, that small voice, just get still and listen to that small voice because it's so soft. When you're thinking of getting advice, and you pray and you have to sit and listen. And as I grew up, I'm like, sit and listen to what? Get still and get quiet for what? I realized what she was saying. I look at her example, how much she how she worked. She got up every single day. She got up at four o'clock, four thirty. I ain't get I, I can't get up at four. I can, but I don't get up at four thirty. But she cooked and she took care of my granddad. And then she went to work and she she built her work. All those things, when you look at the person in your life, the spouse, the grandparent, the parent, who may not remember you, but you know that their essence is there with you. And you remember, go back in time and remember when they weren't always like this. And you think, wow, I am so thankful. I was there and I remember what she used to tell me. And it, it increases your appreciation, that word again, your value that you have for them, the joy increases in their presence because you're not seeing them anymore as what they are and feeling distressed about that. You can remember to see them as they were. They're still that person. The essence of them is still there. So they still are there. Remember that. Say, you know what? Mom, grand, granddad, uncle, my husband, wife, what partner, we used to do this. I'm grateful. You know, we had that time together. I remember when I was just, we used to, used to go buy flowers or we used to go to the farm or we used to go pick wild fruit. Or, for example, my grandmother taught me how to how to scale. I don't know if you know what this. The Caribbean, you, pick, you take the fish out, you do the scales, do the scales, and then you kind of take the bones out. And then you put the seasoning in and all my Caribbean peeps. I'm from Barbados. Hello. Hello to you. Well, she's, and you put the seasoning in and you fold it and she could do that in like two seconds. I still have a little challenge doing it, but at least I know she taught me. I'm grateful for that. So little things like that. Memories. The pictures. You look back in the pictures, at the pictures, and you have joy for that. So... It helps because you can really go into a negative spiral if you look at them and you think, oh, well. And they feel it too, you know. They feel your sorrow. They feel your depression. They feel your fear. And then they makes them more ill. So think of gratitude as a way of, you said vitamin C in. Yes, right, sorry about that. Vitamin C in everybody else. It boosting everyone's immune system. Theirs and yours. Because then they feel your joy. They feel that you've, they're elevated. Their value is, is greater. And then they might even you might get a smile. You never know. So look for a smile tomorrow. Try it tonight. Try it tomorrow morning. Whatever you can. This is not to say that we're ignoring the negative things. We're ignoring the reality. The reality is there are doctor visits. There's tablets you got to put out. There's the changes in clothes, the increase in frailty, the risk of uh, that comes with aging, especially if it's, an, if it's an older person, if it's a chronic illness, the things you have to do, delegation, caregiver burden, all of those. Okay, but then that just make you feel down, just talking about all that. But, you know, that's the reality we're living in. So we're not ignoring that. But it's to let, not let that tip over the scales and de-stress, distress you. Gratitude is a de-stressor. So the life and times of a caregiver can be distressing. And so gratitude takes you, de-stresses you. So what, so that's, so journal what you're grateful for. Go back in time, think of the person and remember the good times and share that. Even just tell them. Remember when we used to do so and so? I really enjoyed that. I really thank you so much for all the things you've done for me. 
I am so grateful that I learned so much from you that I can I can live this life. I can have discipline. I can make my schedule. I can raise if you have children, I've been able to, you've been able to raise your kids from the wisdom you got. The times you did have when no one was ill and you, things were going really well. All of those, bring those back. Write that down. Journal it. Make it a habit. Do it every day. Five minutes, ten minutes a day. Take a deep breath. Slowly exhale and say thank you. Just say thank you. So as Maya Angelou says, it's what we say to God. It's thank you. It's the highest, um, uh, greatest expression that you can give to a person is to say thank you. So we're saying thank you. It improves the relationship. So it improves your immune system, improves the relationship, it improves your joy. It takes you out of that high stress, adrenaline mode of what's going to happen next into through, oh, well, today was not a good day. There's tomorrow. Or, yes, we have to do this plan, plan, plan. But you know what? I'm going to take two minutes tonight and I'm going to write down what happened today that was good that I'm grateful for, that I remember. I'm going to let them know. And when I'm when I'm when when you finish cleaning, if you have to do that, or if you prepare the meal beforehand and you go in to make sure they're okay, if they're able to walk around for themselves and you can play music that they like and you can have, be grateful for that moment, have your cup over them and just, just sit and listen for a few minutes. It started to rain now and I'm like, I love rain. Have I ever said that before? I did. I love rain. And you can listen to the rainfall. If you're somewhere where it's snowing, well, you can listen to the, I don't know, can you hear a snowfall? Or you see the snow falling from outside. It's summer now, most noise. Winter in, all, in Australia, so if you have snow to watch, watch the snowflakes. Where it's summer, look at the flowers. Bring the flowers indoors. Be grateful for that. Show the appreciation. Value who, you, who you're talking to. Take a deep breath. Think of a good time. Say thank you and press pause. Drink a cup of tea. There you go. So, and one more thing in terms of family. If you have children around, there is nothing, nothing like tr helping children to, to have their own little gratitude journal. So, tell you can let them know children smart. Say, use a tablet, use a phone, whatever device they have, but preferably a pencil or a pen where you can actually use your fingers because you're writing it in your brain to write down. I really like in their own little mind, child's mind, what happened. Because when you become, when you get, when they get older and they look back at it, well, one thing is going to do positive reinforcement for them. And then their relationship with the, with the person who you're taking care of is better too. And it's been shown for sure that older persons, I don't know if they get younger, but they do, they seem to, to, to feel younger. They feel more energetic. Frailty is less. You can check the studies. There's several studies, Harvard, Harvard, it's all UCLA. I um, don't call it more. Those are the new ones I know for sure. And there are a few others too that really do show that older persons feel younger, look healthier, have stronger immune systems, less blood pressure when they're around children. It doesn't have to be their own, their grands. It could be just watching children at play. That is something that you could be grateful for. So this time around, this month, hope, gratitude, increase in value. Remember to go back in time and look at the good times, write it down, make it a habit. Three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes is really good. Deep breaths to kind of center you and say thank you. And I thank you for joining me. And if there are any queries you have, any questions you have, any stressors you have, any distress you have, look me up, email, send me an email, send a message. Um, I'm also following me on Facebook, follow me in, on Instagram, follow me wherever you find me. My All my leads are there. Give me a call and let's chat. If it's really distressing you and you're not certain what's happening, give me a ch let's, let's chat about it. But for the moment, you can do it. 
You can. This is a doable journey. And we can have joy and gratitude through this journey. And so I hope this was helpful to you. Share with a friend. Share with the family. Give the children a little gratitude journal. And let's start, to, and let's start today. If it's already tomorrow, well, yay. Happy to tomorrow. And whatever you can do, make it yours. Make it work for you and leave with a smile. And we always want to leave with a smile. So good morning, good evening, good night. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. From my heart to yours, have a fantastic rest of time. If you like this, press the notification bell, the thumbs up button, and subscribe. And I'll be back next week and we'll have a few more tidbits. But for now, gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.